Hey there, welcome to Monday. I hope your week is starting off well and I hope you can hear me too. Uh, it's Yvonne from Women's Fitness Adventures. Thank you for joining me on Monday Night Live. I'm going to share a little bit of another story this week about me and um, perhaps you can relate to it too. Or perhaps it might ask or answer some of the questions that you have around who we are, um, what we do, why we do it and how that might apply to you. So welcome. I'm Yvonne, the founder and CEO of Women's Fitness Adventures. Now in our 10th year or maybe 11th year of adventures uh, and we've got some pretty exciting stuff uh, lined up and some wonderful, wonderful uh, ladies in our community as well. So if you're watching live uh, and you've done this before, go ahead and say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, if you're watching on the replay, please uh, type replay. And if you are watching for the very first time, please let me know um, until you actually pop something in the chat. I don't know who you are. And remember, regardless of whether you pop something in the chat, I cannot see you. So if you're watching in your pajamas, um, then go ahead, uh, sneaky little piece of information. I've got my pajama bottoms on. Uh, I've got the nice shirt on, but my pajama bottoms on below. So uh, welcome. And hello, Kerry. And hello, Sharon, as well. So today I want to talk about um, some notes that I actually wrote back in 2014 when I came home from our very first uh, Great Ocean Walk adventure. And they're still relevant today. And they talk about, um, you know, from doubts to summits and my observations from then. So I'm going to share those with you. And I did have a lot of response last week from um, my sport dodger um, story to uh, being a hiker. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If not, you can watch that on um, YouTube. So hello, Leone from Gympie and hello, Sandra from Sydney. Um, so when I wrote these notes back in 2014, I was actually on my way home from our very first Great Ocean Road or Great Ocean Walk Fitness Adventure, um, where we very first started at Women's Fitness Adventures. And as I was looking back over the notes, for today, I think that they're still really, really relevant and I want to share those. And you can think about, you know, if you're watching this, you're probably interested in going on a multi-day hiking adventure or, you know, desire to go one or have a dream um, to, to do one, but maybe don't know where to start or maybe don't know how to take it up to the next level. So as I share these, um, how many of them are there? There's eight. Think about how whether any of these apply to you or how they might apply to you, whether you agree or disagree, I really encourage conversation and challenges. So please type in there. Um, and whether any of these are relevant to you or you've even thought about these. So hello, hello, Ellen, and hello, Suzanne, as well. So the very first one that I have from Doubts to Summits, based on my personal journey and observations, is that no matter what your age, um, we need to continually challenge ourselves. So let that one sink in, no matter what our age, we need to continually challenge ourselves. Because I see and hear, and I, you know, I talk to lots of women, I see lots of women uh, all the time. I get sent stories and messages and tagged in things. And we can get hung up on um, who we used to be, the 20 year old. And in fact, today at our Monday hiking, we were talking about, you know, the physical shape we all were in when we were in our 20s and how we probably didn't even like ourselves back then, um, but we can get hung up on a story. Um, but no matter what our age, we need to continually challenge ourselves. And that um, why we do hard things, why we put ourselves, for some of us, into positions where it it is harder than our everyday. Let's face it, our everyday is pretty hard. But why do we do the things? Why do we commit to a hike? Why do, when we may not have the, you know, the experience or the knowledge or the skill, why do we commit to, for myself, you know, the hiking but and the business? You know, running your own business is a hard challenge. Why do, why do we do these things um, at any age? And, you know, for me, it's because it's that commitment to self that to show up um, every day and commit to yourself to do, you know, those difficult things makes those challenges that come along in life easier to manage. doesn't make those challenges easier, but easier to manage. Um, it teaches discipline as well. It teaches resilience. And it teaches us or me, um, I'm talking about me, and if this is you, please uh, comment. But doing some things that challenge yourself also helps you improve as a person and you know maybe that's not your jam maybe you don't want to uh, improve as a person but to me that's really really important because 
every experience in my life, whether I leave the house or not, um, today means that I'm a different person tomorrow. So if that's going to happen anyway, then let's do some things that challenge and excite me, even though they might be difficult, uh, to, you know, help me improve as a person for tomorrow. And, no, you know, those things that continually challenge us could be around our health, it could be around our movement, and it could be around our mindset, or could be about all of those. And, you know, your challenge might not be to summit Mount Everest, mine certainly isn't, um, but your challenge might be to get out and move every day or the five kilometres per five days that we used to have or couch to mountain or book onto a hiking adventure or take your first hike. Um, and we all know, and it's been in the news a lot lately, the benefits of um, and the research around the benefits of walking and heart health. And, uh, you know, someone, this is roughly the figures, but, you know, the 10,000 steps a day can result in up on the study that they did of up to 67% reduction in heart disease. So, you know, if no matter what your age, if the challenge is to get out and move, then get out and move if any, for any reason other than heart health. Um, so that is the first one uh, from my recollections from 2014. And hello, Karen, and hello, Jelena. The second one is that being in nature is always grounding. So we can sit in our desk, at our desk or at our office, or we can, you know, stay in our house and, um, you know, let all those thoughts come in and out of our head. But when we get, and some of them can be good and some can be bad, and we see it from the perspective, I have my desk that overlooks the street and I can sit here and I can um, look out that window and have views and thoughts on all of the things in the world. But then when I go outside, into even into my garden or I go out hiking, I have um, this perspective shift um, as I go into nature, because we feel that we're actually part of something bigger when we sit in our own space, in our own dining chair, in our own couch, or you know, in our own thoughts, in our own thoughts all the time. We can um, just think the world is small, and um, you know, think sometimes bad thoughts as well. Uh, so when we get outside and into nature, our perspective shifts because we we feel that we are part of something bigger. And when we were on our Great Ocean Walk for the very first time in 2014, you know, that exhilarating coastline of, of Victoria that can, you know, be uh, sunshiny one moment and raining the next really gives you this sense of, um, you know, being part, back to point one, of something much, much bigger, but also giving you this sense of awe and and your perspective does shift. Time starts to slow down as well when we're out in nature. And there's lots of research that says that, that if we're doing the routine, same thing every single day, time goes fast. And hands up if this year is flying for you, because I know for me it is. But when we get out into nature, our sense of time and perspective shifts and we can feel that we have an abundance of time. The eight hours on the trail or the five hours on the trail or five hours in a desk, where would you rather be? I know where I would much rather be. Um, but being in nature and giving us that sense of awe also helps us feel younger. Um, uh, and it gives us this sense of well-being and vitality. And, you know, I came as I was on the plane home in 2014 and writing this, it was, you know, we'd, we'd been away five or six days, but we felt we'd been away much, much longer. And something had shifted inside of us of our perspective and our appreciation um, of where we were and what we we're doing. And we were able to take that knowledge um, back with us of the location and of ourselves and how we performed on the trail and shared it with those around us. And we know that um, when we go on adventures uh, with our members, that when they come home, those who have been out in nature and then connect to another goal that's nature related, will actually spend more time on themselves in, in terms of movement and physical activity. Um, they also have a greater sense of purpose and a greater sense of, um, you know, putting self first. So, you know, if nature can do that, then why wouldn't we be out there and why wouldn't we be, you know, doing things that challenge us no matter what our age? But the third one, um, from the Great Ocean Walk back in 2014 was that we're never too old or too young to learn. And we can often say I'm too old for that. Um, you know, we have women of all age ranges inside our community. And, you know, we've got some poster girls that are, you know, old, 10 years, 20 years older than me. And 
the great thing about that is that they have just kept showing up. This concept I have of compounding fitness is to show up with consistency time and time again. And, you know, we can learn from, you know, I like to think as we age, we have more wisdom, we have more enthusiasm. Um, well, we should have more enthusiasm and more perspective. But um, young, you know, those who are younger than us can bring this sense of um, curiosity and questioning and, um, you know, that that not knowing, it doesn't matter whether they're one year younger or 20 years younger or flip, flip it round, um, that just proving we're never too old or never too young to learn and to get out there and experience. Now, I know there's lots of you watching and no one's, said anything yet so please go ahead and say something um but you know this never too old or too young to learn on that very first adventure there were um 11 women plus me which is uh you know roughly the numbers that we have on all of our adventures and we can tend to hang on to our stories or we can let go of our stories and it depends if the story is serving you well or not serving you well um or if the story is an excuse or not. Um, so, you know, we can say that, and I think I say this almost every other week, I twisted my ankle when I was 14, therefore I can never do this. Um, and that story might serve you very well because it's convenient, it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you, it puts you in a very safe and a very, co very comfortable space. Which brings me to my next point, and thank you, Mary. Um, is to let go of our fear. Our fear will steal our dreams and it will take our time. And we were chatting um, on the weekend with, with an introductory group of hikers and their questions around our multi-day adventures were, you know, have you ever had anything go wrong? Have you ever had anyone not make the adventure? And yes, sometimes things do go wrong and we have, you know, policies and procedures for how those go wrong. Um, and yes, sometimes people don't make it very, you know, it, it's not a lot on our adventures because we really encourage everyone to do their training and do their, you know, preparation. I can't speak for other companies, but certainly for us. But when people don't make it, it's because they don't do the training. Um, you know, it is very rare that if someone has put in the training, as per the plans that we provide, that um, they're going to be successful on an adventure. Full stop. It is all about that preparation. But, you know, the fears we have, we think about, we have this, we talk about in our Couch to Mountain program, this laundry list of worries that things can go wrong. And we can focus on that. And, you know, I think I've said this before too, if we want to be talked into something, go and talk to the person that's pro that. If you want to be talked out of something, go and talk to someone who is totally against it. And you'll find your answer, but make up your own mind. And here's a tip. Yes or no, get a coin, not very good at tossing coins, and flip it. And before it lands, say, I hope it's, you know, put put on there, you want heads to be this, tails to be that. And as it's up in the air and spinning, go, I hope it's heads, which is the answer that you want. Don't wait for it to land because your answer is when it's spinning. But one of the things this let go of fear, one of the things that we do on our adventures is surprise and delight. And we don't give away all of our secrets uh, until you are on one of our adventures. You know, there's some things that um, happen, um, positive things um, that may or may not be related to hiking on our adventures. And why do we do that is because one of the things that's really, really, really easy to do right now is to Google the heck and YouTube the heck out of anything, you know, from a restaurant to what the meal's like, to reading everybody's reviews, to, you know, swing bridges and, and you know, going over every single inch of it with YouTube. Um, and you may as well just stay at home. You may as well just stay at home because if you're trying to mitigate every single worry in your head, it will never, ever happen because you get rid of one and another one will happen. And if we were babies and we knew what was ahead in our life, would we actually proceed? Sandra, there's a question for your family <laughs> dinner on a Sunday night is, you know, life life is a challenge. Life is, is hard. And if we knew... Um, if we knew everything that was ahead, we probably wouldn't wouldn't have progressed from babies. Um, so we learn to um, 
you know, adapt and change. And most of the things that we worry about uh, never happen anyway. Um, they just cause us angst and, and um, paralyze us to take any action. And Sandra says, it's important not to lose the ability to embrace surprises. Yeah. And I think that that makes us younger as well in terms of our mindset and, you know, our ability to be adaptive and be responsive to a situation. It, it helps our adventurous spirit. Um, and, you know, letting go of the fear, the training plan um, that we provide with all of our adventures really helps overcome a lot of that um, you know, the laundry list of worries, because when you do the training, when you do what's required to be adventure ready for that particular adventure, um, then a lot of those things that you worry about um, and provided you choose the right adventure are, um, you know, easily dissipated when you follow the training plan and do what you need to do. Um, point number five, there's only eight, um, is that women are stronger than we think. Um, you know, we as women mostly underestimate our ability, um, but we are also our own worst enemy. We can achieve when we set our mind to it as women, anything, anything. We can move mountains if we want to. And the support of having other women around you makes, you know, moving whole mountain ranges possible. But we're also our worst enemy. So, you know, I, I get asked a lot from women, um, do you think I could do this adventure? And, you know, we have discussions around where they're currently at and what sort of things they would like to do when it comes to hiking and outdoors. And the training plan will address most of the things um, to get them adventure ready. But ultimately it comes down to um, that self-belief, which I spoke about a couple of weeks ago, and the self-discipline to, you know, do those things that challenge you uh, to get ready. So we can, we are stronger than we think, but we are our own worst enemy because we can come up with every single excuse not to be as strong as we think. Um, so let me just share this comment from Ellen, which is along Sandra's lines as well. An adventure has to have surprises. Surprise! Uh, very important. And so is a little bit of nervousness. Yes, yeah, that friendly fear that Dorothy spoke about in her um, story a few months ago. It increases one's awareness of the experience and hence the enjoyment. Absolutely. If everything was totally predictable, um, you know, if we knew exactly what our every move for the next six, 12, nine months would be, would that excite you? Probably some of you it might. Um, or would you go, oh, well, I'm not getting out of bed for any of that. Um, the other thing, point number six, was always take time to relax. And I was thinking about this on the weekend because life is really busy. I don't know what we're all busy with, but what what we, what I certainly was able to achieve last year in terms of a productive day I don't seem to be able to achieve that now. And I'm sure that's not an age thing. I'm sure that it is just that things take a lot longer uh, in terms of technology and checking this and checking that uh, the, and interruptions uh, than what they used to. So taking the time to relax, scheduling the time to relax because it's not a random thing anymore. Um, and I often wonder what everyone is doing with their time because, you know, we're all ordering stuff online you know, food is easily delivered online if that's your jam. Uh, clothes and things from and even groceries can come online. So what are we doing with our time? Is it that we are finding time to relax? I don't think so. I think that we have to create the time to relax um, because when I know, don't know about you, but when I stop working, then it's thinking about what's for dinner or have I got washing to do or do I need to go to the gym or something like that. So this finding time to relax um, should be on everybody's list and one of the you know the sixth thing from my great ocean walk 10 years ago um, but moving is part of relaxing and that ability to be out exercising in nature hiking socializing that disconnecting from the world and laughing and having fun is just right up there with our, all the quality of life things that we should be focusing on um, so that is point number six Point number seven, which I said before, is um, kind of ties in with letting go of the fear, is don't sweat the small stuff. You know, I I know from all the adventures that I have been the leader on that we worry sometimes about and keep ourselves, some women keep themselves awake at night about, am I going to be able to get up that hill tomorrow? 
is someone going to, you know, have to wait for me? Um, what if I don't make it? What if I hold them up? You know, that's a big one. And even out on an adventure. Um, but the next day they've, you know, been super successful and didn't tell anyone about it till the end of that day. And, you know, all the things that they worried about just disappeared, just completely disappeared. And that comes back with, you know, um, doing a training plan. And when I was asked if people, if we have people who aren't successful, or women who aren't successful, there's not many. It's literally because the training plan hasn't been followed. We always think we'll find time um, and we don't. So we have to create that plan and create the time. And, um, you know, fitting the plan in with your life is really, really important. And I was talking to some of our Couch to Mountain uh, applicants about that today as well. Um, but, you know, you if you book on an adventure and you are given the gift of a training plan, then you need to follow that. Or if you don't follow it, then you do have reason to worry we give you enough time in our training plan. We give you the Goldilocks training plan that manages the ups and downs of life. Um, it sounds like a bit of a love, love slap, that one, doesn't it? Um, and point eight is it's about the journey, um, not the destination, but it is also about the destination. And, um, you know, it's not until you embark on um, a destination or an adventure, a hiking adventure, something that challenges you from whatever level you are and you embark on that voyage of the training, the voyage of the commitment to yourself, the voyage of um, making space and making time for you. You. Not me, not you. You're doing this for you. It's not until you embark on that do you actually realise that um, Yes, sure, the destination's important, but you actually have to get on the voyage. You have to get on the boat. You have to get on, um, you know, the training plan or the progress towards that destination. You can't um, give the responsibility over to someone else to show up on the adventure and go, oh, I don't think I did enough training and, you know, it's somebody else's fault um, that you didn't make it because then you haven't changed. And the the glory, and I know all of those women who were on that adventure in the very, very beginning and two came back and did it with us two weeks ago, um, have seen their journey change over the past 10 years, have seen their lives light up, uh, their ability to physically move capably through the world has changed because they started firstly on that, you know, that adventure, that hiking adventure. And, you know, I... As I said, I went to that school reunion last week, a 40-year school reunion, and, um, you know, how we show up in the world for ourselves really matters. It might, well, it might not matter to you, but it certainly matters to me. So, you know, I think from doubts to summits that anyone, I have absolute belief in anyone can be successful on a hiking adventure. You just have to find the right adventure, find the right group, get the right training plan, and then make that commitment to yourself and then do, do it, right? Three little words, just do it. So to quickly summarise from that, no matter what age, we need to challenge ourselves in every single thing we do in our life, every single thing. Challenge yourself to have something different for breakfast tomorrow. Um, being in nature is always grounding and that sense of awe does make for a younger self. It gives us that perspective of time and space and where we fit in the world and realising once we're in that nature space that actually anything is possible, anything. We are our own limitation, um, that we're never too old or too young to learn, to learn anything and to learn from each other as well. You know, we're all beautiful, special individuals with so much uh, inside us to share. Um, to let go of fear. You know, if we listen to the news all the time, we would never do anything. We would never leave the house because the news wants your attention. It wants to keep you gripped in fear. So you'll come back listening again and again and again. You know, we will never on our adventures, never put you, and I was talking to a group on Saturday, put you in an unsafe position. You might feel uncomfortable because it's something that you've never done before, but we will never put you in an unsafe position. And there's a difference in those two. And I think... Um, our fear of our fear and our sweating the small stuff 
comes from all the what ifs that we can catastrophize and take to the very end. And uh, it's not until you step in and start to get stronger uh, in your own self and in your mind, start to flex both of those muscles that we actually realize that, you know, that other point here, number five, that we are stronger than we think, but we just actually have to step in and not be our own worst enemy. And don't sweat the small stuff. Always take that time to relax because then we reduce our cortisol levels, which helps us with our body composition and it helps us with much better sleep as well. And it is about the journey, but you have to step into your own journey. You have to own your own life because chances are if you don't make decisions, then time or somebody else will make the decisions about how you spend your hours and your days and your decades. And then, you know, at one point you might look back and go, wow, did I really uh, want that to be my story? Um, so that's Monday Night Live for tonight. Now, um, I know that many of you are hanging out for me to send you an email about um, our adventures for next year. So I'm not going to give anything away tonight, um, but you will get an email later this week. So if you are watching and you aren't on our list, then um, please message us and let us know. Um, but there will be expressions of interest um, open for all of the adventures that we're offering for uh, next year. So there's still some available this year uh, and for next year. And um, it is just an expression of interest. It will have the date and the location and the type of thing we do. Um, so if that one takes your fancy, just tick the box. It doesn't obligate you in any way. Uh, from there, um, you're already on that list, um, Mandy. Uh, Mary, so all good. Any of our members are already on that list. Uh, it's just if you're not on our um, our list, uh, you won't see it. Um, and then from there, we will um, upload the itineraries, um, but they won't be open for booking. So what we want to do is give firstly all our members fair and equitable access to the adventure of their choice. So you will know all the details of the adventure, the itineraries, the time, so you can get leave um, approved if you need to or plan your life. Um, <laughs> I know, here you go, now you're all commenting. Um, but hey, you have to do all those other things on one of our adventures. You have to commit to yourself and the journey and let go of the fear. Um, and so all those details will be available. Um, then we have a multi-day uh, adventure webinar at the end of June. I really encourage everyone to register for that because we will be starting to talk about uh, the different adventures in terms of um, the fitness levels required and the trail details. Um, and then at the uh, end of July, we have showcase. So those adventures will open on that night online. So you really want to register for showcase and that will be available to register uh, later this week as well. Um, showcase is a frenzy. Our adventures do fill out really, really quickly. But having said that, everyone this year who wanted their adventure first adventure choice was able to get on their first adventure choice. So we make sure that there's plenty of time for you to think about how the how that adventure date fits into your life, to think about um, time for training and how, you know, whatever level you will have plenty of time to train um, and, you know, how much each adventure costs. Uh, so you have plenty of time to look at whether that works for your budget or not um, and, you know, get get settled and get excited. But, you know, they do sell out really, really quickly um, because they are just awesome and amazing, as many of you who have been on them know. Um, so, you know, once you see the list, if you have questions, feel free to send them in, um, in terms of, you know, how that pertains to you and stuff. And we can talk about those questions on our webinar at the end of um, uh, June as well. So make sure you register for that multi-day webinar on June 26, because um, we will cover quite a bit of questions then. Um, so that is it from uh, me for this week. Thank you for joining in to Monday Night Live. If you have any questions afterwards, I'll drop that link in in, in a moment to the multi-day um, webinar. It's free, of course. Um, and it's, it's for question and answers as well. So we'd love to see you there. And as I said, if you're not a member and you're watching and you want to receive that email, then please message us through here um, 
so that we can get that email to you as well. So that's it from me. Thanks for tuning in for Monday. I hope you take away those eight things. And even if it is to challenge yourself with something different for breakfast, uh, please let me know. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you next week, which will be June. Wowee. Okay. Take care. Bye.